Hello everyone, uh, Stepan here. Today I'll continue the series on the Italian game with one of my favorite Gambit openings and uh, probably one of my favorite openings in general and that's the Deutz Gambit. Uh, the name is probably unfamiliar to you, uh, not too many people call it that way. Most people refer to it uh, as the in Italian Gambit, which is a different opening, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a Gambit in the Italian game in the Gioco Piano, which uh, leads to very exciting games. We are going to go over uh, ways for black to go wrong in the gambit and we are going to go over three main defenses uh, in which after the pawn sacrifice black, black can capture either with the bishop, with the knight or with the e-pawn and we are going to go over uh, why each of these moves is bad or good for both sides. Okay, so let's get into the opening. e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, the Italian. Uh, the gambit arises from the Gioco Piano, so bishop to c5. And the main move here is for white to play c3. White can also play d3, uh, b4, the Evans gambit, or white could castle. And this is uh, how the Deutz gambit continues, so castles. And now the main move for black is going to be knight to f6 in almost every game. Black could also play d6, which is slightly more passive. After that, the gambit doesn't really work. So in this position after you castle, which is a fine move, uh, you can transpose with knight to f6 and then uh, c3 or rook to e1, c3. You could go into the normal Gioco Piano lines. Or after knight to f6, uh, you could play the Deutz Gambit. And the Deutz Gambit is pawn to d4. An explosive pawn sacrifice in the center. If you ask the engines what they think about the move, they will say it's bad. Uh, black is slightly better. You are giving up a central pawn, but uh, the position could lead to very exciting games for white and it has huge attacking prospects which could result in some quick wins as I've had in my tournament games. In fact, the first, uh, the first two times I've played this move in tournament games, my opponents blundered horribly and I was unprepared to punish that and I didn't know the theory that well. It was two years ago and now I do know and hopefully I will teach you how to punish bad moves and trust me, more often than not, your opponents are going to blunder in this position. Okay, let's go over the worst move first. Taking with the knight just isn't good, because after knight takes d4, then you take on e5, knight takes e5. Now black has two possibilities, either knight to e6 or queen to e7. Uh, the f7 pawn is attacked, so black has to react. If queen to e7, then white is already much better, because bishop takes f7, and after king f8, you can retreat your knight back to d3. Your pieces weren't both attacked because of your e4 pawn, so uh, knight to d3, and once uh, black takes the bishop, then you play e5, winning back the knight, and... Your position is fine after d6, e takes f6, we don't have to go through this much more. The material situation is um, both sides have six pawns after black recaptures. Uh, black is probably going to recapture with the queen, but uh, black's king is unsafe uh, on the seventh rank, unable to castle, and white is just better. And that's why, and after queen takes pawn or pawn takes pawn, you get to capture the bishop, so... White uh, has relinquished black of his bishop pair as well. Uh, the second option after knight takes e5 is knight to e6, which is even slightly worse than queen to e7, because in this position you take the knight, bishop takes e6, and after f takes e6, uh, black doesn't really want to take with the d-pawn, because then queen takes queen, king takes queen, uh, knight to f7, four king, king and rook, winning the exchange, so f takes e6. Now you play knight to d3. Uh, this pawn can't really be taken, because you can... Uh, well, okay, let me turn on the engine for this. If black takes this pawn, then I guess you have this check after you take the bishop. So uh, knight takes bishop, knight takes knight, and then queen to h5 check, winning the knight. So that doesn't work. So after knight to d3, uh, black plays bishop to e7, retreating back the bishop. And now you play e5, chasing the knight away, knight to d5, c4, chasing the knight even further. And after knight to b6, you can see that white has huge attacking potential with f4. White can even um, play b3 and bishop to b2 in this position. And uh, the engine will tell you that this is almost plus 2 for white, so completely winning. And that's why after d4 in the Deutz Gambit, taking with the knight is the worst move and the only option that actually loses uh, for, for black. Uh, the other two moves are slightly better for black. And now we are going to learn how to punish them. Uh, the second option is e takes d4, taking with the pawn. And this is actually the Scotch Gambit. You could get this from the Scotch game in some positions by transposition. And uh, 
This is the second best move, I think this is far too risky for Black, but if Black knows what he's doing, then he's fine. Now the line is pretty forced for the first couple of moves, e5, chasing the knight away, and the knight can't really move because then Black is going to be in a world of pain. Uh, wherever uh, the knight goes, let's say the knight, the knight goes here, then you can take, take, knight check, and if if the king moves, then you, 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 take, the, you take the knight. And black can't really take twice here because the bishop is defending, so this is losing. So after e5, uh, black has to play d5, counterattacking the white's bishop. So d5, and now uh, you don't take Ampassan, that would be too passive. e takes f6, you take the knight, black takes your bishop, and now you take on g7, getting your pawn back. Now you can see that both sides have seven pawns, you have just regained your material, and uh, it's arguable who's better here, because uh, the engines actually think this is all zeros, as you can see. They think this is um, equal. I think that black has a slight edge if he knows what he's doing, but practically speaking, from a human perspective, white is much better, and I would always rather have white. So rook to g8 in this position, blocking the pawn, you can't allow white to, to take your rook with check. And now uh, white has one more forced move, so rook to e1 check and uh, bishop to e6, covering the check. This is what you will get in every game. Let's go over the line once again. So d4, uh, e takes d4, e5, d5, take the knight, take the bishop, take the g7 pawn, block the pawn, rook to e1 check, bishop to e6. And now uh, the position branches out. Uh, white can choose between two moves. One move which looks visually more appealing, uh, perhaps more intuitive than the other one, is actually worse. We are going to go over that first. And I like playing this move nevertheless, although uh, in the only tournament game I've played from this position, I played the move which is inferior, trying to bluff my opponent, and uh, I actually lost the game. So the position uh, with this move continues with knight to g5, putting pressure on the bishop. And you are basically threatening to take twice. Now, I knew the theory well and the first line goes queen to d5, and believe it or not, you play knight to c3 here, your, your knight is defended, and you play knight to c3, uh, the pawn can't take, because if pawn takes knight, then rook takes bishop check, and uh, you are losing material, and you can even take the queen immediately, because queen takes queen, uh, the bishop is pinned, so whichever you fancy more, I think taking the queen is better, so you have just won a queen and this bishop is hanging as well. This is perfectly fine for white and uh, this is just easily convertible. You're up so much material. So after knight to g5, um, wait, let's go back to this position, knight to g5, queen to d5, you play knight to c3. And now uh, black's best option is queen to f5, still keeping pressure on the, on the knight and threatening to, to take your knight from c3 in this position and threatening the f2 pawn. So your move is knight c to e4, defending f2, saving the knight, threatening to take the bishop, so the queen has to keep an eye on the bishop. And in this position, black castles. Now, this position is slightly better for black, especially because you're about to lose your g7 pawn. And uh, this is why I've stopped playing this move, and this is why this move is inferior to the other move I'm about to show you. And in this position, you take on c5, take the bishop, queen takes c5. You can see that now uh, this bishop is, this pawn is hanging. Actually, you can take twice. And you can either take with the knight or take with the rook. I think taking with the rook is more precise. So after queen takes c5, rook takes c6. Pawn takes c6, knight takes c6, forking queen and rook, and after queen d5, knight takes d8. But here, as you can see, uh, both sides um, have equal material after black, black recaptures the, the g7 pawn, which happens now. You can't really save your knight, because after rook takes g7, uh, you can't take on, on c6, because uh, black is threatening checkmate. So f3, and now knight takes d8. And uh, this position is better for black, objectively. Uh, the engine thinks this is minus one, or even more than minus one. But let's face it, this is the worst case scenario after you play knight to g5, so it's still playable. And uh, it's not lost, I mean, black is better, but it's not lost. The material is equal, both sides have six pawns, you have bishop versus knight, and black's pieces are more active, but you, you can hold this position. Now let's go over to the better move. After rook to e1, uh, bishop to e6, uh, the best move in this position isn't knight to g5, but bishop to g5, uh, gaining a tempo on the queen. Uh, the move uh, f6 doesn't work, of course, because the rook takes e6, and then you take the pawn, so that's out of the question. The best move is bishop to e7, and now you take bishop e7, queen e7, 
and you take the d4 pawn, gaining your material back. So, uh, knight takes d4. Now, uh, black has six pawns, white has seven pawns for the moment, but black is going to capture the, the g7 pawn, so the material will, will be equal. Now, black continues with rook to d8, not exchanging here because uh, the white knight is pinned. c3, knight takes d4, c takes d4, rook takes g7, and now queen to a4 check. And this line after bishop to g5 is forcibly better for white. These were the best moves for black, and there are places for black to go wrong. And this is plus 0.7, plus 0.8 for white. White is better here. Now it might look visually very dangerous because black has the open g file and black has a lot of pressure, but black's king is stuck on e8 and uh, now it will have to move to f8. So after knight to c3, you might uh, even give up this pawn. Uh, and after black takes here, you can take the a7 pawn and the position continues like this, like that. But as I said, it's plus one or more in some positions. And White is perfectly fine here. So let's go over that once again, the squash gambit. So e takes d4 after the Deutsch gambit. e5, d5, ef6, dc4, fg7, rook g8, rook e1 check, bishop e6. Don't play knight to g5. It's a semi-bluff. Play bishop to g5, a better move. Uh, here, uh, well, if black isn't careful, he could go wrong much sooner. So black has to exchange the pieces. And this position is just fine for white. I, I love this position. So yeah, this was the move e takes d4. And uh, now the important thing to emphasize is that both these moves, after d4, taking with the pawn and taking with the knight are inferior and shouldn't be played by black. And uh, once you, you get, I'm sorry, whoever is challenging me, I'm uh, recording a video so I can't accept the challenges, sorry. Uh, so both of these moves are inferior. The main move in the Deutsch Gambit and the best move by far is bishop takes d4. And now the point of the gambit uh, is that you take with the knight, knight takes d4, knight takes d4 and you play f4, weakening the, the knight and removing the defender of the knight. And uh, the only way for black to continue is pawn to d6, after which f takes and d takes happens. Now let's go over the ways uh, for black to go wrong. In the first tournament game I played uh, the Deutsch Gambit in, uh, my opponent uh, played knight to c6, and that I knew how to punish. This is now immediately winning for white. I hope you can spot the, the tactical sequence. Okay, so after knight to c6, uh, black is weakening himself too much. This knight is pinned, you have to remember that, and this pawn is weak. So once those factors are combined, you get a beautiful sacrifice on f7, bishop takes f7. Now if uh, black doesn't capture, then white is just winning, so king takes f7. And now f takes e5, the knight is pinned, it's going to be lost, or black has to capture with the other knight. So now knight takes e5, and now the point of the sacrifice, queen to d5 check, the knight is still pinned, you're going to win the e5 knight. So king f8, queen takes e5. And uh, now the material situation is equal, both sides have six pawns, but uh, white is uh, just just winning. The, the black king is unsafe, white actually has a lead in development, white has a more active queen, the black knight on f6 is pinned, and this is lost. The engine th thinks it's plus two and a half almost. Okay, uh, now the other mistake black could play after f4 is knight to e6, which I also had in, in a tournament game, and I failed to punish it. I knew the idea, but I actually drew the game, unfortunately. So now knight e6, you take on e5, f takes e5. Uh, knight to g8 is the best move. Now. If your opponent takes on, 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 on e4, then queen to f3, you're attacking the f7 pawn. And uh, castles is the best move giving up the knight, but let's say black tries to defend here after this. Uh, let's say knight takes, because after queen takes it's obvious uh, you're, going to, you're going to take on f7, so that we are really not going to get into. Let's say knight takes. Now you still have three attackers, so this position is just losing. And in my game, uh, after after this, my opponent played knight to g8 and they played queen to f3. That was the mistake, so I gave him a chance to consolidate. It's still winning, it's plus four, but queen to h5 is just a more precise move. After queen to h5, queen to e7, you simply continue your development. Black is never going to be able to develop. You can even take here twice and win a pawn back, but don't take it. Just 
uh, expand on the queen side, expand on expand on the king side, develop your other rook, put pressure on f7, and you're going to win. You can see that this is plus five. So after f4, both knight c6 and knight to e6 forcibly lose. And uh, remember how to punish that. If knight to e6, f5, knight g8, queen h5, queen e7, bishop e3, develop normally, just just put pressure on on the on black's position. And the best move, and what you are going to get, unfortunately, in almost every game, is pawn to d6. The only good move. This is the only continuation that's favorable for black in the Deutz Gambit. It's minus 0.3. Uh, white has given up a pawn, but white is uh, white has full compensation for the pawn. After d6, you continue with f5, d5, and bishop to g5. This is the start of the variation. You pin the knight, it can't be defended twice, and you can double up black's pawn, so black can't really castle. Now the problems for white in the Deutz Gambit. Firstly, in almost any position, the queen is going to want to get to c5, uh, attacking your attacking your king, and your c4 bishop is undefended. So white is often going to have to play moves such as knight to a3 or knight to d2 to defend the pawn. Secondly, you want to play c3, removing this knight. And if you can remove the knight, you take the queen, king takes queen, you win your pawn back. And you're fine, you have a better position with equal material. The third thing is, you often want to play king to h1 to remove the king from this diagonal. Okay, so those are the ideas. Now, there are several moves for black. I'm going to, first I'm going to show you the sideline, which isn't good for black, uh, which I've had in a game a month ago on the Zadar Open, and I managed to lose the game. The sideline is b5. I've never seen that move before the game. After b5, uh, I played c3 and lost, uh, because I had to exchange the queens, and this was just bah, a, horrible, a horrible game. I lost, I resigned soon, so don't play that. But after b5, you have two good moves. You can play passively with bishop to d3, still have a better position. Castles, queen d2, king h8, knight c3. You have a better position. The, the, the knight is still, still pinned. Or after b5, a better move is bishop takes b5. And uh, this isn't a, a piece sacrifice. You're going to get the piece back. And now after knight takes b5, you take the queen, king takes, rook takes f6. And now the point is that... After g takes f6, bishop takes f6, check, king d7, bishop takes h8. The bishop has enough time to, to get out of the corner, so king e6, uh, knight d2, bishop b7, bishop g7, knight d6, rook e1, rook g8, bishop h6. You have time. This position is equal, but I would always rather have white. The material situation, white has actually won a pawn out of the gambit, so you have an extra pawn. It's not the safest pawn, but you are better. So remember that in the b5 sideline, you can take on b5. Just take the pawn. Now the problem is that after rook takes f6, black doesn't have to take. Black can play king to uh, king to e8. But after king to e8, your position is perfectly fine, and you can play rook to c6, rook to f1, rook to f3. There are several moves you can play. It's still equal, and you, your position is fine. So this was one sideline. The second sideline after bishop to g5, which I wanted to go over, is uh, knight to e6. Knight to e6 is better for white, uh, because now you take the queen, queen takes d8, knight takes d8, and you win your pawn back. Bishop f6, g f6, rook f6. This is simple enough. I think this is easily winning, and this is the move I've most often seen. Now, I play the Deutz Gambit a lot in, in blitz chess, so this is what I usually get. So now king e7, rook h6, knight e6, knight e3, c6, rook f1. You just have a simpler time. You, you, you basically want to get your knight to f5, you want to exchange these bishops, and you want to put pressure on the f7 pawn. This is easy enough. So knight to e6 can be easily punished. Take the queen, take the f6 pawn back, and you're fine. Uh, the second sideline is queen to d6, and this move is okay. You punish it by playing bishop takes f6, and after g takes f6, you play c3, chasing the knight away. Uh, knight to f5 uh, is the main move here. It doesn't lose a piece because, as I said, your bishop is hanging uh, on the diagonal. So after e f5, queen c5, king h1, queen c4. Uh, this is slightly better for black, uh, but still I would prefer, prefer white because your king is much safer and uh, you are a pawn down, but uh, it doesn't really matter that much in this position. So this is a sideline you have to know, queen to d6. And it's still a pawn gambit, so if black plays correctly, uh, then black is slightly better. But against the human, this gambit works uh, more often than not. Okay, uh, and there are two main moves after bishop to g5. Uh, one of them is bishop to e6, and I hate playing against this move, even though it's one of the best options for white. So now knight to a3, you defend your bishop, you don't exchange. Queen to e7, 
now threatening uh, queen to c5 after bishop takes knight takes queen c5 would mean a discovery with the knight would uh, win a piece uh, so c3 chasing the knight away knight to c6 and now queen to f3 uh, defending your pawn and putting extra pressure on f6 now you can take three times and win your pawn back so the main move here is bishop c4 knight c4 queen c5 check threatening to win your knight but now once your queen is on f3 you can play knight to e3 and black castles here now you can still win your f6 pawn uh, back and have a safer position this is plus one for white this is one of the uh, situations one of the positions in which the gambit has actually worked and that seems to be the main move so bishop to, X, to e6 is the second most often played move and learn how to punish that so knight to a3 defending your bishop don't exchange queen e7 c3 chase the knight away knight c6 queen to f3 put more pressure on f6 bishop c4 knight c4 queen c5 defend knight to e3 castles and you can play king to h1 here continue normal you don't have to capture here immediately and now the main move queen to e7 uh, this is by far the best move for black and the most often played move and uh, this is this move is the hardest to punish uh, you play knight to a3. As I said, queen to c5 is a serious threat. Uh, either king to h1 or knight to a3 has to be played. I think knight to a3 is more precise. Rook to g8 here. Uh, after you capture, the g file is open, so why not put your rook on g8? It, it doesn't do anything on h8. King to h1, removing your king from the diagonal and from the g file. Bishop to d7. Queen to e1, you want to get your queen here, somewhere. Uh, putting pressure on f6 and putting pressure on f on h7 castles queen to f2 okay uh black is better here that much is clear black has an extra pawn uh, by the way knight takes e4 doesn't work because you win an exchange after that so knight e4 bishop e7 knight f2 bishop uh, d8 it doesn't work so black continues with bishop to e6 uh, now you have to develop normally. Rook a to e1, defend your e4 pawn. It doesn't matter if black plays queen to c5 here, your queen is no longer on the diagonal. a6, uh, bishop takes, g, g takes c3, chasing the knight away, and after knight to, knight to uh, b5, you can play bishop takes b5, a b5, and queen to a7. And here, as I said, black is better. This is by far the best option for black, and this is what happens if black plays against the Deutz Gambit perfectly? And this is move 18. Black has an advantage of minus 0.7. So this is the worst case scenario if you know what you're doing with the white pieces. And I think that uh, the, the Gambit is justified, more than justified. Having uh, one uh, extra pawn isn't that much for black, especially because the pawns are doubled along the F file. You're going to get a lot of infiltrations here with your pieces. The F6 pawn is often hanging and the position is double-edged but playable for both sides. And uh, that's why I would recommend this uh, this pawn sacrifice and I love the Deutsch Gambit. So let's go over the position once again. So E4, E5, Knight F3, Knight C6, Bishop C4, Bishop C5. You don't play C3, you don't play D3, you don't play the Evans Gambit, you play castles and wait for black to play knight to f6 black is almost always going to play knight to f6 and now there are normal moves such as d3 which is the main move but you play d4 the Deutsch gambit and knight to d4 e takes d4 can be refuted bishop takes d4 is the best move knight takes knight takes f4 weakening the knight uh, knight c6 bishop e6 uh, knight c6 and knight to e6 we went over that easily punished knight c6 with bishop takes f7 this doesn't work we went over that this loses and if knight to e6 then take here uh, knight to g8 queen to h5 you have too much pressure and the position is winning for white so after f4 the main move for black is d6 you take d takes bishop g5 and now uh, b5 can be played punish that by taking on b5 uh, knight to e6 can be played punish that with queen takes d8 uh, getting your pawn back Queen to d6 can be played, take on f6, gf6, c3, knight f5, uh, it's an exchange of pieces, but good for white. Bishop e6 can be played, uh, knight a3, queen e7, c3, knight c6, queen f3, bishop c4, knight c4, queen c5, a favorable position for, for white. And queen to e7, which is the main move, can be played, so prepare against this the most. Prepared, good players are going to know this move. Knight to a3, the main move. Rook g8, king h1, remove your king from the diagonal. Bishop d7. Queen to e1, castles, queen to f2. 
This is the position you are going to get. And I know uh, you have to study 20 moves or theory, of theory, but once you study them, you are going to get a lot of wins. Out of uh, four games that I played in the Deutsche Gambit, I lost one, uh, drew one, and won two, uh, won two. And the game I lost was the only one I played against the lower-rated opponent. So you can find this game on the channel. It's in the Zadar Open. Uh, I think the one of the last videos in the Road to GM series, you can find it there. So yeah, I wanted to show you the Deutsche Gambit. I hope you learned something. This isn't something that too many people know. So studying this could give you a great edge in the Italian. It could give you a great surprise weapon. And as I said, I've played this three times against opponents rated over 2,000. Two games I won, one game I drew. So people are not prepared for this. Uh, I hope you enjoy playing it and I hope you crush your opponents. Uh, thanks very much for watching and stay tuned for more chess. See you later. Bye-bye.